Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today we are here for another pen review and today we are reviewing a quite uncommon pen. This pen is a Japanese pen and it is the Platinum Glamour. This pen, as far as I could find some information uh, at the blog that's called stilophilus.blogspot.com uh, the information is that this pen was released in the 1970s. It was available in several colors. I'm not sure how many. I saw this pen already in white, pink and kind of a turquoise. Not sure if there are more. And it is a pen that is interestingly inspired on those Japanese jumbo pens. But this is slimmer and much much shorter so it really has some kind of proportions that are not very common on pens so let's take a look at this pen and the characteristics by the way let me say this is a short pen uh, but there was a version of this pen which was called platinum 3776 gathered and these Platinum 3776 gathered. I'll try to insert um, a photo from eBay here. Uh, it was a pen that... It is the Platinum 3776, but with the same kind of uh, rings scheme and also the same kind of texture. So it is an interesting pen. Unfortunately, I can't find any for sale in Europe and taxis from Japan are quite expensive, but I really would love to have that pen just for comparison. I think that would be an interesting thing. So now that I talk about that I talked about it, let's take a look at the characteristics of the pen. So let's start. It is plastic, it's light weighted, and let's start with the top. The top has the clip that is inserted below a ring and in the middle of the ring you have a black top which kind of Parker would call it a jewel. Then you have this clip that says anything that there is no indication this is a platinum pen and this, this clip is narrower at the top as you may see and then it becomes larger. It reminds me a little bit of the beak of some ducks, maybe. Then you have some grooves here on the on the cap. One, two, three grooves. Then you have a band that has that is a kind of a double band with a thinner ring and then a wider band there. And that's the end of the cap. Then you have the barrel with several more grooves. It tapers up a little bit here. Then you have the same scheme as in the cap, not symmetrical, the same. And then you have another three grooves and then you have this domed end. So it's a very uncommon design, I would say. The cap comes off by just by pulling it. It clicks on place, as you can hear. It clicks securely. And when you uncap it, let me cap it again, all the grooves are exposed, so there is no groove hidden inside the cap. And you have this section that tapers down very uh, in a very visible way. And then you have a nib that has a very strange uh, looks to it. Here you say you can see platinum and then below you can see written medium. This pen was available with steel nib, the case of this one, or with gold nib. Then you have this plastic feed and the pen is a cartridge filler, cartridge filled pen. This is plastic, this is plastic, so I wonder, maybe this can be eyedroppered. It's not something that I'm going to try because I guess you, all of you already know by now, I don't love eyedroppering pens, so I will not do it, but maybe it can be done. 
I'm not sure if ink will leak easily, I'm not sure of that, but I, I would say that these threads wouldn't be snug enough to avoid that, but to avoid leakage, I'm not sure, and the, it takes a cartridge, but short barrel will allow only to take the international short cartridge, or even, I didn't try, but I guess it will also accept the little Caveco bulb converter, not the piston converter, I don't think it will have room, maybe it has, I didn't try, but anyway, I don't think you have an advantage for that filling system here, so you have a cartridge, you can refill the cartridge and you put here, the interesting thing is that although this is a platinum pen and platinum has their own um, proprietary cartridges, this one will take international short cartridge, not the proprietary platinum cartridge. That is kind of fun. You can uncap the pen and if you want to write with it like this, it is very short on your hand. But I think you can do it, at least I can. But if you prefer, you can post it. It posts to cover that end dome. It posts securely and now you have kind of a full-sized pen, very thick pen to write with. So this is a very uncommon design from the 1970s. This pen will cost you, uh, I don't think you can find this pen for less than uh, 100 euros, so it's not very inexpensive, but it's very uncommon thing. One thing I have to say about this pen is that the nib is stiff, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And also, it is a short pen, but it is thick. It's not easy to carry in every pen pouch. It doesn't fit very well in every pen pouch because it's really thick. One solution I have is these Caveco denim pouches. They are for two Caveco Sport pens. That's what they are made for but you can put one of these pens here. They will have some room around, as you see, but I think this is a very good way to carry one of these pens. It's not really a pocket pen. It is too girthy for that. I want to show this pen next to some similar pens. And I have two of them. Another one is this. This is the Tombow Zoom 828 FP or just Tombow Egg and it's called Egg because it has this egg shape. This one is more similar to those jumbo pens. I would say these may have been inspired in by the Platinum but it has a much simpler design. It's the same thing but without the ridges and, uh, and less um, without the grooves and less uh, rings. It has one ring on the top over the clip, one ring on the base of the cap, and then it has one ring between the barrel and the section, and also a short pen from some years later than the Platinum. Platinum was the first as far as I could understand. Then, very recently, I think this year in 2021, there was this pen, the by the way, this Tombow also takes uh, short international cartridges and then the, the Moonman Q1 or Majon Q1 came and this pen is very similar. So you can see this pen is really, really, really similar to the, to the Tombow egg. Let me just uncap all of them just for you to see. This one has a very wide nib. This also has a very wide nib when compared to its length. And then you have the Moonman or the Majon, which has a different design in two particular points or three. One is that it has it is a screw fit cap that screws here on the bottom of the of the section. So it is a screw fit cap. The nib is a number six nib, so you can compare them. These nibs are much shorter 
but much, much wider. This one is regular number six nib, so it's really different. This makes like that cartoonish feel. This one is very regular. And then this one is an eyedropper pen and those two are cartridge pens. But I converted this Majon in a cartridge pen and you can see how I did it in another video that I made about that about that procedure. Now I want to compare this pen with other pens that you may know better. Those are the similar ones. Now I want to compare this pen with the Lamy Safari. This is the all black edition and I want to compare it also with a Parker Centennial Dufold. This is just a little bit older, an older version than the regular one, but I remember to bring this because these ring scheme reminds me the, the same as in the platinum. When you compare the length of the pens, you can see this is much, much shorter. When you uncap the three pens and post the platinum, because I would say this pen is meant to be posted because it's short, it becomes almost the same size of the dual fold and the Lamy but much, much wider. Now, I just want to show it, to show you the pen against some other pens just for some silly comparison. So this is with the Lamy, the usual Lamy Safari and the Dufold. But I brought here to the game some other pens. I brought here the Sailor, which, is, which has the same kind of scheme. Not uh, the Sailor 1911 large. I don't have a Platinum 3776, so I cannot compare it, but maybe someday I'll be able to, to get one of those gathered. I would love to have one, but hard to get. I have here a Caveco Classic Sport in black, so even Caveco is longer but much slimmer. And we have here the Caveco Lilliput, so this one is about the same length, but so much thinner. You could fit the Lilliput inside the barrel of this one and still have room almost for another one. So you can see it really fits. So this is really a girthy pen. And finally, I want to make a more extreme comparison of the Platinum Glamour with the William Shakur, the banana pen, as some people call it. And you can see the difference in length. And when uncapped, there is also <laughs> some differences, as you may see. Very, very different pens. And if you post the Platinum Glamour, it will become a little bigger, but even then, when you look at the nibs, there is a big, big difference. But when you think about the girth, there, here on the barrel, the William Shakur will be maybe a couple of millimeters wider than the Platinum. So this is really a very large, a very uh, girthy pen. Now that I've showed you the pen characteristics, price and so on, let's see how the pen performs on paper. And so here we have the pen and paper and let's write with it. I will post it because it will be easier to use it this way. And let's start. This is the Platinum glamour with medium steel nib. The ink is Diamine Inkvent Calendar 2021, the red edition, and this is ink number three, Ash. And the paper is the usual, Rodia dot pad.
and now let me show you how this pen will write so this is how it performs this is very smooth this the, the feel of this nib on paper is really really smooth it's not comparable with any other platinum pen that i tried which has uh, they usually have a very strong feedback that I don't really like that much, at least in platinum pens. I like them in, for example, in sailor pens, but not that much in platinum. The, the, the writing, so it, it's very, it's very comfortable to hold. This is very wide, so you, your fingers will rest easily where, wherever you want to hold the pen maybe like this, it's very comfortable, about the stiffness of the nib. You can try to press it to have some line variation, but you can't really have that much, and you feel that you're pressing too much. About the reverse writing, you can do it. It's a little scratchy, and it is much finer than that medium. So, this medium is actually more like a fine, and this would be like an extra fine. So, I will write the, the fox phrase because I forgot to bring here the book from where I take my writing samples. So, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So, what do I have to say more about this pen? This pen is strange, is comfortable, it writes really well and the pen doesn't skip. However, you will find that the pen tends to dry a little bit when left kept for, a, for some time. If you have the pen like this for maybe a week without using it, it's probable that the nib will be a little drier and you will notice with time that the cartridge will evaporate some ink. About the, the wetness of the nib, this is a medium nib, but I would say it is quite wet. So, it, you can see, I, I think this is really an interesting pen that shows well the ink that you are using and allows you for a very comfortable writing experience and you will have a lot of people looking at you because of the strange size of the pen. Now. As I told you, I need to try to find a Platinum 3776 gathered, preferably in Europe, if I can, because I think it would be a good match, slimmer and longer, this one shorter, I think they would be perfectly together in the way that I organize my collection. So, this is all for today, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, if you liked it, please don't forget to like and subscribe the channel and I'll be back soon for more reviews. So, see you soon. Bye.